this is Chopin Ballad number four. This is like the <laughs> such a, an, an amazing, amazing piece. Um, I wanted to ask to start also by asking you what you find is most challenging in this piece. What do you still want to achieve, or what do you find difficult? Build, building it up all the, all the way to you know to the end, and then having a storyline, I guess, if you want to put it that way, or having it convey so much in. And I think that's absolutely, absolutely right. And I think one of the ways to achieve that is if you, and because you have such beautiful um, sound and freedom in your, in your, uh, in your playing, I, I find that sometimes maybe a little bit too much freedom because I think if you're trying to, if you're trying to tell a story and you're trying to kind of keep a line that goes all the way to the end, I think you have to choose your moments. Because if, every, if, if everything is beautiful, everything is special, then in a way nothing is. Although that's, you know, but, but of course everything was very beautiful, but um, I feel like, I guess Western music is always about creating and breaking expectations. So you, you, you build up a certain, even, even very, very quickly, or it can take a long time, but you build up a certain expectation, then you break it. And that's the event. Um, so I think if you, I don't know, if you, if you are a little bit stricter with some of it, uh, in terms of both in tempi, but also in, in, in rhythm, and, um, then I think when you do break it, it, it's more of an event. And then you get a little bit more of that storyline. Let, let's, um, I, beautiful beginning, by the way. Um, it's, it's hard, especially on this piano. It's very, it's very, very bright, right? Um, let, let's start again. Yeah. Very, very gorgeous. The one thing about this, this, um, this beginning, which is really interesting to me, is that he has these interlocking lines. This right hand is going up, and right and left hand is going down. So this is going. And this is going. Right? So you. And I think if you stop yourself a bit, That you, yeah, you, you kind of break it already. I think if you build this up. I think it's just, a, it's just basically a, an introduction to the story, isn't it? It's like, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the story of the three brothers who went to find their wives or whatever. <laughs> it is actually, I, this is, it, it's, it's said that people say that this is, um, inspired by a Polish folk story, this piece about three brothers that go in search of, of, uh, some, um, of a woman to marry. And, and, and you get the, the, the one brother is, each brother is an iteration of the theme. You know, you have the, and you have, and each one of, uh, it's the same story, but each one takes it further. I don't know if that's true, but, but, uh, Great. So I think one of the ways, and it's already better. I think if you just, one of the, it's, a very, it's like if you have a simple story, if you're telling a story, so you have this. And on top of the, 
I, what I don't understand is, the, is a little bit is the structure of your phrase because you do, and then you go. There. To my ears, it sounds like the tension, the harmonic tension. Is, So if you have, I don't know, it, it seems like this is, and also, there's a certain pleading in this. So it's, you have one thing, then, then the longer phrase, right? It's kind of a question and an answer, a little bit. And, and I would, just as an out. It's, it, we don't know where it's going. It's a, Yeah, so, so if, if this is this tension, right, in, harmonically, it like, you have your, that's a beautiful moment. I have, actually, I remember speaking once to, to Murray Pariah, who said for him, the entire phrase is going here. I don't know if I agree with that, but I kind of find that interesting. You know, this, you know, we always kind of take it as an afterthought. It's kind of the point, almost, of the, of the whole story. <laughs> but, but, um, but anyway, so I think if you, if you start a little too, too um, and it's very beautiful, but if it's too um, soft, you have nowhere to go, and it's only piano, right? And then when you go to this, that's pianissimo. So if you were too pianissimo before, you have nowhere to go. A little, a little more. And the other thing is that when you have, if you do want to have a certain feeling that you're closing, then if you're too, it's, it's beautiful, but I think there's a certain simplicity in the beginning, you know. You, you, you have this, That's, that's the story, folks. This is just a suggestion. 
we've heard, we, we, the first time you did it, uh, right, you didn't. Maybe the second time you could do something else. Uh, you can continue, continue. So uh, what I'm basically saying is that if you want, um, this is the first time the theme comes. If you are a little simpler with it and think a little bit of longer lines, so you have, then 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 yeah, then you create the the, the fundamental of the story, and we're not already out of the, yeah, we're, we're kind of, then when you vary it once and then you vary it again, we've already had that kind of more slightly simpler framework. And it's, a, it's there's something simple about that, like something simpler about that, you know, so if every time you go, or, I think, um, there's a mirror there, you know, in terms of, um, uh, um, in terms of the, the rhythm of it. Right? So if it's, you don't hear it as much. But again, I, this is just, everything I say is equally wrong. Um, <laughs> Going to Penisimo. Yeah. If if you're and this is just a totally different world, right? The, it's the bridge, but if it's too similar, then we don't. You know. Yeah, you see, you lose the mirror because you have. This. But if you do. And then suddenly much slower. If, if you um, kind of hear that even with all that stuff that's happening, that it goes. Also. So this is the question and this is.
Mm-hmm. And I would, I would, if I were you, I mean, I would start a little bit. If, if you're, this is your tempo. I don't think I don't know if 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 you need to. I think one of the ways that you build it up is the same as with the Schubert. One of the ways you build up something is if you have a feeling that your you know that your tempo is more or less consistent. Um, and when you so you establish something and then you break it. So when it's faster, it means something, you know. So if I I would this is this is the same. It's just. The second brother. So, so if we can still hear the same thing, if, if it's too, there's so many different stops, you know, you know, so if, if, we, if we hear the, the theme, um, so I think we lose a little bit if it's too, you know, just it's the same theme, just with you know a, a, a bigger journey. You know. I feel like I've taken a little bit like now it sounds a little bit yeah sorry it's my fault so I think what another thing that we need to remember is that in Chopin there are very few downbeats you know it's always like it's always going somewhere so it's never if you can feel that that you're you're doing this but but it's still that not this Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so don't, don't, um, don't lose the, don't become too thick here. It's a little, a little listian, you know. That, you don't need. I think if you're quite light with your, with everything, it's still singing, but, but not doesn't get, you know, just. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. We, we have to kind of. Uh, <laughs> um, I really love the um, second uh, theme, um, and I think what what was really nice about it is that you kept uh, the lilt. If you keep. But sometimes, sometimes you lost a little bit of the, the rhythmic element of the because when you have a, you can't do that there. So I think if you again simply two.
Tuy. E aí está sobre o grande alegria. Keep the tempo. So for, for me, if, you, if you're a little, you get now to this Legero bit, and I, I don't know, I, he has this, this big arch going all, all the way, like this huge arch. Uh, whatever, sorry. And then, no, this. Hard. And I feel like a, it's a little, it's a little like this, a little too soon. Because then, when you get to this, so I think if if you if you have this big legato kind of, um, and I you know same tempo, not not too not too fast, just not not still developing. It's like suddenly Legere added. After, after, it's such a, a contrast to like, um, even though the same, the same music. Just a little, little thing, but all right. Um, and the same thing here that I feel like there's so many different tempos that I can't hear that this... Um, um, this... That is the same thing. Um, so if you keep... And I think it's always good with, with Chopin because Chopin is such, has such fluidity. But if you, when you practice and when you learn the piece, try and do it as almost unflexible as possible to begin with. So you have a base that you're, you know that every liberty you take means something. You know, every little time that you take, every little um, thing in, 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 in the harmony, every change, every sudden. It, it is part of the story, but if there's if you're walking through the fields and you're going, you know, there's a pretty flower, there's a pretty flower, then you lose a little bit the kind of the journey, like the sense of going from one place to another. Especially in the fraction piece like this, where you have so many different um, sections, and you have to find a way to meld them together so that you do have a structure. And I think the way to do that is with tempo and with just a little bit more sense. Of um, yeah, of direction and, 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 and simplicity when you can grab the simplicity when you can. Um, there we go. Just a little bit. Uh, and I think I would, when it comes to the um, careful with your pedaling, especially in the coda. This is awfully low in the in, in the. It can really get like. None of you, none of that it did with you, but whatever, whatever uh, clarity you can give it, uh, the, the better. Um, let me see before that. Yeah, and w when you have this. Uh, Um, 
careful that you don't get this kind of, again, this very highly thick sound, because you have such a beautiful transparent sound, and I think um, the, it very rarely gets into this triple fortissimo quality. This is still, it's just forte and uh, just this kind of full, full and, you know, full of, of, of a lot of things, but not this. Um, yeah, this is really hard code, so I won't make you play it again, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, you, if you're, if you're a little bit clearer with it, and grab your chances to go down. Like for example, um, whatever. You know, so when you use that piano. Otherwise you just get a little bit too flustered by, by not, not you, not you, but one gets a little bit too faster. <laughs> Beautiful, really gorgeous. Thank you. In the master class, we worked on the, I guess, the continuity of the piece, because this piece is uh, created of many, many little sections, and then it's hard sometimes to have a direction or have the piece feel like, you know, a whole thing. So that's mainly, he gave suggestions of how to, you know, keep sections together and how to keep your mind focused on what's coming up.